Welcome back. In the last part of this chapter, we'll be talking about the slopes of straight lines. Uh, we already sort of briefly mentioned slopes when we talked about graphing equations of straight lines. I said that when a line was written in standard form, that the coefficient for the x term, that that represented the slope. But we never actually went further and talked about what the slope is or how we find it. Reminder that the slope is the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. When you see this little symbol, the little triangle, that's actually the Greek letter delta. It's a lowercase letter delta, and that means the change in. So whenever you see this, and you'll see this if you're taking any physics classes, that symbol gets used a lot. Anytime we're talking about how an amount changes, that's delta whatever the amount is. So the slope is delta y over delta x, the change in y divided by the change in x. It's just the difference in the y values minus the difference in the x values. Uh, one thing just to mention here is that we're talking about a line that passes through these points and the points have different x coordinates. Because if the two points had the same x-coordinate, we would be talking about something that's a vertical line. And one thing that you might remember from back in your high school days is that for vertical lines, their slope is undefined. So as long as we're not talking about a vertical line, x-coordinates are different from each other, then the slope is just found by subtracting the y-coordinates from each other and subtracting the x-coordinates from each other. And once you found the slope of your line, you can easily create the equation of your line using the point-slope formula. y minus the y-coordinate equals slope times x minus the x-coordinate. So here I have a line that's got a slope of negative two-thirds, and I want it to pass through this point for one, and I want my equation in general form. Remember, general form is where you have it written with x's and y's on one side and constants on the other. So we'll start off with our slope point form, y minus the y-coordinate equals our slope times x minus the x-coordinate. And we'll put in what we have. The y-coordinate is 1. The slope is negative 2 thirds. And the x-coordinate is 4. And then I just need to simplify this. So let's do that. In the second bracket, I'll multiply that negative 2 thirds in. Negative 2 thirds times x is negative 2 thirds x. And negative 2 thirds times negative 4, that's plus 8 thirds. If you want to get rid of fractions, and I kind of do, if I multiply everybody on the left side and the right side by 3, then that will clear out all of my fractions, and then that means I'll be able to rewrite things with x's and y's on one side and constants on the other, and I should now have my equation, as I wanted, written in general form. It's not wrong if you leave your fractions lying around, so if you instead were to rewrite this as two-thirds two -thirds x plus y is equal to eleven-thirds, that's what you would get if you were to uh, keep the equation in this form and not clear out the fractions that would be equivalent. These two are both essentially the same equation. The only difference is one has fractions in it, the other one doesn't. I, I just think it looks nicer if you can avoid the fractions, so that's what I've done here. I've done it in general form, getting rid of fractions, but I don't expect you to do the same. Um, so this is how I'll leave my answer. 2x plus 3y equals 11. Now, of course, the last example, we were given a slope. We don't always have a slope given to us, but if you have any two points, that's enough for you to come up with the equation of your line, because first you could come up with your slope. So our slope is our change in our y values divided by our change in our x values, 
And so I'll do y coordinate minus the other y coordinate. So negative 1 minus 4 over the x coordinate minus the other x coordinate over 3 minus 2. And there we go. We've got our slope is negative 5. And now to come up with our equation of our line, I can use either point. I'm going to use my slope point form. y minus the y coordinate equals slope times x minus the x coordinate. The nice thing to mention here is that when you're finding the equation of your line, whether I use the point 2, 4 or the point 3, negative 1, I should wind up with the same answer for my equation of this line. So choose whichever one you want. I'm going to use the point 2, 4, but you should check to see that if you use the point 3, negative 1, you will wind up with exactly the same answer. So I'll put in 4 for y, put in 2 for x, and this question wants me to give my answer in standard form, which is the form y equals. So I'm almost there. I just need to bring that 4 to the other side. And there we go. That would be the equation of our line that passes through these points. And you can check to see that it does. You can see that if you put in 2 for x and 4 for y, that it should satisfy this equation. You can also check to see that if you put in 3 for x and negative 1 for y, it satisfies this equation. Remember that if you know that these are two points that are supposed to be on that equation, then both of these points should satisfy this equation, should make it a true statement. One last thing to mention, and then we'll do one last example, is the relationship between parallel lines and the relationship between perpendicular lines. Remember that the slope tells us how our line is changing. Things with positive slopes are heading upwards as you look from left to right. Things with negative slopes are heading downward as you look from left to right. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero. If you're thinking about two lines that are parallel to each other, that means that they're both traveling in the same direction, that they both have the same change in y over change in x. In other words, if you've got two parallel lines, then you know that their slopes have to be equal to each other. For perpendicular lines, these are lines that meet up at a 90 degree angle, something that's a nice 90 degree angle. And the relationship between them, you can express it in one of a couple of ways. One way to express it is that if you have two, per, uh, two perpendicular lines, then their slopes should multiply together to give you negative 1. Or the one slope is just the reciprocal of the other with the sign changed. That's usually how they express it in high school math classes. They say that if you have one slope, for example, three quarters, then the perpendicular slope would be found by taking the reciprocal and changing the sign. That these two slopes would be perpendicular slopes. Or if you have something like negative three, then flipping it and changing the sign, so positive a third, these two should have perpendicular slopes. These slopes are perpendicular to each other. So here we're looking for the equation of the line that passes through this point for 1 and is either parallel to this given line or perpendicular to this given line. So for this line, we can see that its slope is 1 third. And so if you're looking for a parallel line, parallel lines would have the same slope. So our slope for our parallel line is a third. And so now I've got my point for one. I've got my slope one third. So I can now use y minus the y coordinate equals my slope 
times x minus the x coordinate. And I can then solve for y. And I'll come up with my equation y is equal to one third x minus a third. So you can see that this line for sure is parallel to the given one because they both have the same slope. We can see that they both have a slope of one third. But we've also made sure that the line that we constructed here, that this passes through the given point for one. And again, you can check to see that if you put in four for x and one for y, that this will be a true statement. Left side and right side will be equal to each other. Okay, so last part that we want to do here now is, again, we want the line to pass through for one, but this time we want it to be a perpendicular line. And so we know that if the slope is one third for parallel, then the perpendicular line the slope should be take the reciprocal and change the sign or in other words the slope should be negative three and so now using y minus the y coordinate for my point equals slope times x minus the x coordinate and we can come up with then our equation of our perpendicular line and again you can check to see that comparing it to the given line the given line has a slope of one-third the other line that we constructed has a slope of negative three and you can check to see those two slopes they multiply together to give you negative one which means they are perpendicular lines you can also check to see that this point for one does satisfy this equation if you put in four for x and one for y left side and right side should be equal to each other. So now I can feel confident and say that this should be the equation of my perpendicular line. It's perpendicular to the given line and it passes through the point for one.